and welcome to another episode of Among the Stars Celebrity Perfume Review. So today, I'm extremely happy to be bringing you guys my review of Black Opium by YSL. So this perfume launched in 2014 and is the spin-off to the original opium which launched in 1977. So, I like had my eye on this fragrance for a really, really, really long time and it took me forever to pick it up and I don't know why it took me forever to pick it up. Um... Because I really like this fragrance, but it took me forever to pick it up, mostly because it does have a, a higher price tag on it. Um, the three ounce bottle, if you bought it retail, is going to set you back about $115. Um, so it did take me a little bit to pick that up, just because of the price tag. Um, I was able to get it a little bit cheaper, so I decided to go with it that way. So, the box looks like this, and it says Black Opium, and then it's got the big YSL logo that says U Saint Laurent down here. Eau de Parfum Spray, 3 ounce, and then the sides are kind of this rosy gold. Same with the top. Bottom's just got a barcode on it, and then the back is like that. The bottle looks like this, and is the same design as the original Opium, where you've got the circle with the lines. I don't know how well those lines are picking up here. Um, coming around here, and it's kind of in this sequin black... Um, glittered finish, and it's got Black Opium uh, Yves Saint Laurent right there in the middle. Looks like that. Love this picture, by the way. This picture that I did for this was so much fun to do. So, the other thing I want to show you guys before I go too far in this is this perfume has gotten, since it was launched in 2014, has gotten so many spinoffs um, and additions that are sounding funny. So, there's this, which is the original, and then Shortly after they launched um, the Swasti Crystal Edition, which is this bottle, but it's completely encrusted in Swasti Crystals. Um, and then there is Wild Edition, which I believe launched this year, um, and is the same original formula as the Black Opium here. Um, but the bottle is a little bit more clear, and it's got, like, animal print on it. Um, and then there was... I feel like I'm missing another one. But then they had released the Eau de Toilette version, um, which was, came out, and it was a lighter, um, bronzy version. I like the color was a little bit bronzier. Similar, um, notes. They did change the notes a little bit to make the Eau de Toilette. Um, and then they spun it off and whatever. And then they did a Nude Blanche version of it, which is a festival, I believe, in France or Paris. Either way, I had that right, because it's Francis and Paris, Paris, whatever. Anyway, um, I would like to get my hands on Nuit Blanche. Um, it is available on eBay. I just have to pull the trigger and buy it. Um, and then they did a limited edition version of the Eau de Toilette, which I actually have, and it is the Sparkle and Clash edition. So this is the color of the Eau de Toilette. As you can see compared, it is a little bit of a different color. Um, but the Sparkle and Clash edition of the Eau de Toilette has over a hundred Swasti crystals, so there's a hundred here, and then it wraps around, and it's on the back as well. So, um, I actually picked this up for a steal, because, um, they had this available at Bloomingdale's, which I don't have a Bloomingdale's here, but I ordered it online, and this is the three ounce bottle, and they wanted, um, for some reason it was listed on the website for $74, um, and so I bought it, and then shortly after, like, I bought it, they shipped it, I didn't get charged more. And then shortly after, the price went way up on the website, I think it's maybe 135 maybe 150 now. Um, the normal Old Toilet, if you do not get the Sparkling Clash Edition, is $110 for the 3-ounce. So even then, I got a really good deal on it. And then they also did the Black Opium Sparkle Edition, a.k.a. Black Opium Collector's Edition, this is the 1.7 ounce or 50 milliliter bottle. Um, so as you can see in size, ooh, I'm like on a roll of dropping perfume bottles. Um, size difference, it is a little bit smaller than the original um, three ounce, but it is very similar. The bottoms are both very like in that kind of black tone. Um, but this, it starts off like a gold sparkle and it goes down. So anyway, black opium out of toilet. So, 
like I said, this was a spin-off to the 20, uh, 1977, um, Opium, which was a huge seller for, uh, YSL, and they have done numerous amounts of spin-offs to the original Opium. Um, I'm not a huge fan of the original Opium, personally, um, just because it is a very heavy fragrance. It is very sophisticated, but it's almost a little bit too much for me. Um, I do like Black Opium, though. I will say, and I want to eventually get all the additions. So the notes for Black Opium, top notes are pink pepper, pear, and orange blossom. Middle notes are jasmine, bitter almond, licorice, and coffee, with base notes of vanilla, patchouli, cedar, and, excuse me, hell like a hiccup burp there for a second, I'm so sorry. Um, anyway, and cedar in the base. So what's really weird, and cashmere, sorry. So... The one thing I will say about this fragrance is it's gotten so much um, praise because it was a very unique fragrance when it launched. Um, it does have some fragrances I would say it's similar to, but it is almost the like introductory notes to this. Um, I could see it being similar in ways to Coco Chanel's Coco um, Noir, I believe, and then Tom Ford's... I always screw this up. Is it a Black Orchid or Velvet Orchid? It's one of those two, and I want to say it's Black Orchid because the name I remembered was similar. So, um, when I first spray it, I get a little bit of the pear, um, and I get the orange blossom. Um, but it's surprisingly fruity for what you would think. As it starts to dry down, I get the vanilla. I get the patchouli a little bit. It's not super heavy on the patchouli, but it is there. Um... I definitely get the cashmere and the cashmere and the cedar kind of come together and add a warmth to this fragrance. But surprisingly, the coffee is not super strong in this fragrance. It is there, and you can smell it. Um, but it is not super pronounced. It's not like a super duper coffee scent. Um, which kind of kills me because that was kind of the, like, the gist of this fragrance when it first came out was it is a very coffee fragrance. Which, I do get a little bit of the coffee... But it isn't going to be like you're smelling coffee beans or anything. Which, I mean, my picture kind of then is irrelevant. Because, you, I mean, the coffee's there. And the reason I did the coffee beans is because it's super, like, this was, like, their coffee floral. And I definitely feel like it's more of a fruity, or more of a floral, fruity fragrance with the coffee note supporting it. Like, you can smell it. Like, if someone told you there's a coffee note in there, you're like, okay, yeah, I could see that. But, in reality of it, you're not going to be able to, like, if someone smells you, they're not going to be like, oh my god, what fragrance are you wearing? I can smell the coffee in that. Like, you're not going to get that. And the same with the Eau de Toilette. Like, the Eau de Toilette is just a lighter version of the original. Um, which, surprisingly, a lot of people have said they've had bad lasting power on this. I definitely get about six hours of lasting power out of the original Opium. Sometimes it'll last longer, sometimes it won't. Um... But some people have said that they have bad lasting power with this, and then when they try the Eau de Toilette, the Eau de Toilette they actually have a better lasting time with, which is really weird. Um, but I will say that I do really like this fragrance, and it does last a long time on me. Um, it just isn't something that lasts a long time on everyone. It, this is a very kind of bipolar fragrance. It works on some people, it doesn't work on other people. Um, but I have noticed it doesn't change a whole lot amongst people. It does smell very similar on everything it goes on. Um, it is a unique fragrance when it first came out, but now I don't want to say it's a unique fragrance because this came out in 2014. Um, it launched early 2014 in, um, Europe and then launched later 2014 here in the United States. But since there has been several spinoffs from other companies that have made flankers to their uh, fragrances that do smell somewhat similar to Black Opium, and I feel like that's just because they hopped on the bandwagon. They saw how well Black Opium did. Black Opium um, won a couple different awards on the 2015 Fragrance Foundation Awards, so it is a beautiful, beautiful fragrance. It is very unique for what it is. Um, I do feel like other people copied them, which, I mean, that sucks because that's a thing that happens a lot is people copy other people when it comes to fragrances and I hate that. Um, I wish people could just let a fragrance be a fragrance but if they have overwhelming success with it they're going to copy them. So I really do like this. Um, I've worn it a lot more than I thought I would. Um, 
I don't wear the Eau de Toilette as much, mostly because I don't want to reuse this bottle up um, because of it being the Sparkle and Clash Edition and the Super Special Edition. Same way if I got the um, Swassy Crystal Edition where it's completely encrusted Swassy Crystals, um, I'd probably never use that. I don't know if I'll use this. I'll probably use this one before I use this one because these are both the EDP. So I don't really want to use it up before I use this one up. But I do want to eventually get the Eau de Toilette to see if there is a difference in the lasting power of me. Because I've worn this one. And I really don't notice a whole lot of a difference. But I don't wear this one as much just because I don't want to use it up. Um, but I do really like this fragrance. I definitely feel like it is a perfect summer nighttime fragrance. It lasts, like I said, for hours on me. There's been times where I've worn it out and then the next morning and still can smell it. So I definitely think if you're on the fence about Black Opium, go get it. Um, it's one of those fragrances that is kind of a heavy price tag, but you can find it on, like, eBay, FragranceNet, places like that for relatively cheaper than they want it in, like, say, Macy's or Nordstrom or anything like that. So, definitely go pick up Black Opium. Um, if you're looking for a super heavy coffee fragrance, this isn't going to be the one you want because it's not super heavy on the coffee. I definitely feel like it's more on the floral with the fruit backing, with the coffee backing that. Definitely a vanilla note in there. But I love this fragrance. It is. It was a huge, huge, huge success. Um, a lot of YouTubers love this fragrance. So I definitely would go pick it up. Um, even if you just pick it up for the bottle because this bottle is gorgeous. So there you guys go. There is my review of YSL's Black Opium. If you guys like this review... I cannot talk. If you guys like this review, hit the thumbs up button. I do have um, some videos planned coming up relatively soon. Um... Waiting on one more Shakira fragrance. My nose itches like crazy today. Sorry. Um, I'm waiting on one more Shakira fragrance. And then I plan on doing a Shakira block of reviews for you guys. So, lots coming. Lots in the works. Definitely stay tuned. I have surprises coming up relatively soon. With videos I want to pull out of my belt. And do for you guys that you guys think I may never would have done. So, as you guys always, thanks so much for watching. Follow me on Twitter, Ada S Perfume, and Instagram, Among the Search Perfume. Links are in the description below. And as always, guys, thanks so much for watching. Bye.